Why is medical coding so important? When people think about coding, they often pair it in with billing because that is a very big function of medical coding, but it is not the only one. There's actually a lot of really important reasons that we assign codes to diagnoses and procedures and medical services and equipment. Actually, just yesterday I was watching a video online where doctors were discussing some of the variants of the COVID-19 virus and how one of the factors that puts you at a higher risk of having more severe disease and hospitalization is obesity. And one of the comments that they made is, well, that doesn't get captured a lot because doctors don't want to diagnose obesity. They don't want to submit that ICD-10-CM code because of the stigma associated with that. A lot of healthcare data is driven by codes and those codes are based off of the documentation and coders are assigned with making sure that not only are the codes correct, but the documentation is reflective of the service that was actually performed. But let's start with billing. So billing and coding do often go very hand in hand. In most colleges, institutions, schools, training programs, billing and coding are kind of paired together. So a lot of people get confused. They're not sure if it's the exact same thing, if they're two sides to the same coin, which in a way they kind of are. Billing and coding are both big components of the revenue cycle in healthcare. However, coding does serve other purposes, but let's talk about that billing purpose. If you've ever watched one of my live streams, you know that because of the large amount of people that come in and watch or ask questions, I do sometimes get trolls that come in and they're usually quickly taken care of. But I did have one come in that I think was intentionally trying to upset me by asking me how I feel as a medical coder contributing to the bankruptcy of American families due to medical debt. Now, first and foremost, medical coders don't set pricing in healthcare. We have very little to do with how much things actually cost. Medical coders are really looking at documentation and information and translating that, categorizing it into different code sets based off of the diagnoses, based off the procedures, based off of the services and supplies. And actually making sure that coding is done correctly reduces a lot of fraud and abuse that's done of federal funds, of insurance funds, and the less that they have to spend on investigating fraud and correcting it, that means that they'll have better budget for healthcare funds and actually could lead to reduced healthcare costs. Accurately and compliantly assigning the codes make sure that the bill gets processed correctly. That doesn't always mean though that we like the outcome of the way that bill is processed. Sometimes that insurance plan that that patient has through their employer may have a very high deductible and that particular procedure that they had wasn't covered by their insurance. The job of a medical coder is to review all of that information, convert it into the right code sets to submit the legal and compliant correct way, even if we have feelings otherwise about how maybe it could have gotten coded to get it paid, it has to be done the legal and compliant way. And you will find medical coders that are very emotionally attached and do advocate for change in the healthcare industry. A lot of people in billing and coding love being able to submit the claim very clean, that it gets processed correctly by insurance, and that that can increase patient satisfaction because we all know how frustrating it can be when one of your bills gets messed up and you have to call and fight the insurance and you have to call the hospital and they're both giving you different stories. If you've ever had health issues or had a family member who had a lot of health issues, you know how frustrating it can be trying to keep track of all of those different services and dates and doctors and bills and this got paid and this didn't get paid and this went to deductible and this didn't. It can be really, really awful. But as I alluded to before, one of the other components of medical coding that makes it so, so important is data tracking. So tracking things like disease spread, the progression of disease, even treatments that may have improved or worsened conditions. It's a lot easier to track data from a code versus a narrative because there's, you know, a hundred different types of diabetes that a patient could have and assigning a code to each one is a lot easier from a data perspective than having a hundred plus different narratives. So let's say, for example, a patient has diabetic hyperglycemia, which is E11.65, and then they have diabetic counseling training, which is tracked through HCPCS code G0108. 
And then we see after that, they were assigned back to code E11.9, which is uncomplicated type two diabetes. That would show that that treatment that that patient had, that diabetic counseling, was helpful for their hyperglycemia, and now they don't have complications of their diabetes, and now they're tracked with E11.9. So looking at that data, a provider can go, hey, you know, since this was helpful for this patient, let me pull a higher statistical sample of patients and see if they also will have help. Let me uh, run a trial and see if giving this service to all of my patients that have hyperglycemia will improve their outcomes. And if it proves to be effective, then we will push more treatment towards that and not only treatment, but we know that we need to possibly push more funding for that treatment. The codes also help us plan for budgets of how much money we need to take care of patients based off of their healthcare costs and predicted future healthcare costs. Going back to our E11.9, our uncomplicated diabetes, so if we know statistically a certain percentage of patients are going to develop different complications and how much they cost, we can predict over the next five years, 10 years, how much healthcare costs are going to be consumed by these patients. Or we can say, hey, these amount of patients are healthy. Statistically, this percentage of them are gonna develop an acute condition within a year or a chronic condition within a year. That's how much this is gonna cost. When you hear those articles out there like, oh, the Medicare budget is gonna run out of money in X amount of years, that's how they're able to abstract that data based off of the codes, based off of how much the costs are and predicting how much that is going to continue in future years. And then we can determine where we want to direct funds. So out of those procedures or services, CPT and HCPCS codes, for these conditions, ICD-10-CM codes, which of them have been really effective. And let's pour some more money into making sure patients get those services because they are going to have better outcomes. Medical codes and medical coders are a huge, crucial piece of the healthcare puzzle. Actually, if you're interested in becoming a medical coder, I would highly, highly recommend onlinedegree.com. I have partnered with them and they will help you find the best online program for medical billing and coding to fit your needs, your budget, but you have to use my link go.onlinedegree.com slash contempo. But if you're still deciding and you want to know more about how to become a medical coder, what I would highly, highly suggest is you either go to the main channel page and click on the playlist that says you want to be a medical coder, start here, or you can just click that playlist right there. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.